Welcome to Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swido. I'm speaking today with Dan Reitzik. He's the CEO of a company called TerraZero Technologies. They're a cutting edge business that bridges the physical and digital worlds. And in their words, they're dedicated to redefining the way that people live, work, and play. Dan, thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me, Michael. This past week at the Grammys, one of the nominees for best pop dance recording is a TerraZero client, or I guess more accurately, I should say she's on the Warner Records label, and Warner Records is your client. I'm talking about BB Rexa. She was nominated for her song, One in a Million. She was actually one of the first artists to use your company's technology. You're also partnering with companies like Napster and artists like Teddy Swims. He's one of the hottest new artists on the market. So I thought it'd be interesting to better understand what Terra does with them. That will give us an insight into your company. So tell us, what are you doing with Teddy Swims? Uh, Teddy Swims is, like you said, uh, 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 probably the, the, the hottest new artist uh, in the marketplace right now. Um, so when we started the company, we built traditional metaverse experiences for clients like Warner, uh, Atlantic Records, uh, Bacardi, Miller, and others. Um, and these were built in a decentralized metaverse world like Decentraland or Sandbox, et cetera. Uh, over time, experience uh, and feedback from both clients, but also users, uh, we built a new technology called Introverse, which is more of a private version of a metaverse world. And one of the first uh, uh, clients for that would be Warner Music. Um, and essentially what we did was, you know, <clears throat> people consume content on the internet. What we want to do with the introverse is allow people to experience that content. So think about the stuff that we do almost like a little mini video game. So getting back to Teddy Swims, this was one of the first use cases of our scalable platform called Introverse Pro. Uh, it allows artists and influencers, uh, small businesses, uh, content creators to essentially select from a, a suite of templates, customize their their experience however they wish, um, and 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 be able to invite their fans or their customers in, uh, in into an immersive experience. With Teddy Swims, what we did was we uh, built out um, a band room, almost like a recording studio. This is obviously all virtual. Uh, it's a recording studio that had Teddy's avatar, uh, his band in there. And then on the walls, uh, there would be uh, images of Teddy, uh, his band. There would be music sampling. We integrated with uh, one of the music streaming services in order to provide uh, the ability for uh, users to, um, to listen to the tracks and to learn about them. Uh, with Teddy Swims, we even uh, had the capability that visitors could send messages to Teddy and Teddy would reply to some of those messages. And, and that was a lot of fun to read some of those. Um, but there was also a scavenger hunt where people could uh, go through the Teddy, uh, the, what we call the Teddy verse, but Teddy Swims experience um, and, and interact with different uh, items and trivia and things like that, and actually have a chance to win tickets to his concert in their local state, uh, uh, city, or province. Um, and these were an, an, an example of taking a user from a digital world and sending them into a into the real world with coordinates to go find these tickets for Teddy Swim's show. And I'm happy to say that every single one of the tickets was found and claimed and enjoyed. Awesome. So really an interaction there between the virtual world and the physical world. And in that virtual world as well, it sounds like it's a chance to kind of go behind the scenes to like watch the artist practice, but also to really enjoy their music and even have a chance to communicate with them. That's exactly the point of what we're building, an immersive internet. You mentioned the term there, which I know you do like to lead with, and it is the introverse. And it's something that I really hadn't heard before until I started reading up about Terra Zero. So the introverse is not the metaverse. Mm -hmm. What exactly is it? Well, to answer the question, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background um, how we started the company. So my previous company was a company called DMG Blockchain. Uh, DMG is one of the largest Bitcoin miners uh, in North America. Um, while at CEO of DMG, I raised over $130 million for the company and took it to almost a billion dollar market cap. It was the second highest traded stock on the TSX venture in 2020 and I believe 2021. I left uh, DMG in uh, late 2021 in order to start Terra Zero. And 
the reason I wanted to start Terra Zero is I'd heard about the metaverse and I'd heard about an experiential version of today's internet. And I realized very quickly that this was going to be the next version of the internet, an immersive internet, an internet that we experience content, we don't just consume it. So we started Terra Zero in late 2021 uh, and through 2022, uh, because we had the necessary skill sets we had the uh, programming languages for various decentralized worlds, which would include Decentraland, Sandbox. We had the 3D modelers uh, and Creative Studio. Uh, we were able to attract a roster of clients as a startup that you can only dream of. Uh, these included Bacardi, uh, as you know, Warner, Atlantic Records, Fidelity, PwC, uh, Jimmy John's, Salesforce.com, and, and, and many others. And as we built these activations for these clients in a decentralized metaverse space, which includes NFTs and crypto and the whole thing, um, the clients told us what they liked and didn't like. They, they, you know, some companies, Estee Lauder, for example, they can't sell makeup and accept Bitcoin as a, a payment method. Um, some companies needed to guarantee data protection and IP protection. And so we went away and we said, okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to build exactly what these brands are looking for, uh, but also what the consumers are looking for in an immersive space. And so we built the introverse. And the introverse is essentially looks the same and feels the same as a metaverse environment, but it's built on a Web2 backbone. And using an integration with Stripe, for example, we can now accept credit card payments as opposed to just crypto. Um, we could guarantee data protection, IP protection, and some of the uh, KYC and AML, which were some of which were some of the very important factors for uh, these Fortune 100 clients. So know your client KYC and AYL. AML is anti money laundering. Anti money laundering. So I think that gets into some of the other areas of your business as well. Uh, and just a. You know, you mentioned a great client base. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, but just to kind of zoom in again on this introverse, uh, I think maybe an example might be like internet versus internet, right? So internet is, you know, all over the whole world, whereas a company might have its own internet. And just like that, it might have its own introverse. Is that fair to say? It, it's exactly what it is. So the metaverse itself is, a, is, or at least the beginnings of the metaverse world are decentralized. They're, they're usually run on blockchains. They accept crypto. Uh, everything from land to buildings to avatars is managed as an NFT. Um, but there's challenges with that. Uh, you know, of the global population, uh, just over 3% have ever had a crypto wallet. So some of these brands uh, were saying to us, why would we only market to 3% of our of our potential audience. And so that's why we went about and set up uh, the Introverse, which is an entirely new tech stack. Um, but you're absolutely right. It's almost like a private version of a metaverse uh, environment. That's really interesting. Now, in your earlier days, I saw you worked with Angels Envy. And I don't know if you know this, but I grew up in Kentucky and I am definitely a bourbon fan. So when I saw that you create something called the Bourbonverse, well, I gotta say my interest was piqued. Tell us more about this. Yeah, this was a really cool activation. So at the beginnings of the company, it was very difficult for big brands to find a reputable vendor or partner to build uh, metaverse type experiences. And it was one of the global marketing chiefs at Bacardi worldwide that came right through our website. Uh, they'd seen the Miller, uh, the Miller activation we did for the Super Bowl um, previously to this and and found their way to our website. Anyway, the point is, is that they wanted to create a an immersive experience um, that tied in with the launch of a new uh, distillery. And so, you know, it was no short, uh, it, 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 there was no shortage of volunteers for my creative team that wanted to visit uh, Kentucky and go in and actually visit the distillery, learn all about how it's made, um, because the whole point is to create a digital twin. The whole point was to show consumers where does this drink come from and how is it made? And so we built something for Angel's Envy that's uh, that's basically the bourbon verse. And people were invited um, uh, to jump right in. This was built on Decentraland, one of those decentralized metaverse worlds. They were invited to jump in. They would learn the process, mash the different ingredients, uh, and actually learn the process of how bourbon uh, is made. 
And there was also a tie-in with physical products where if you entered a contest, you could purchase uh, a particular kit that would go along with the game. Something that's, again, very important about this activation, and it was the biggest we'd done by that point, um, I believe that the user uh, interactive experience time was over 26 minutes. Uh, so 26 minutes was the average amount of time that a consumer would spend making their way through uh, the bourbon verse. And, uh, and obviously, uh, all the way along being, um, you know, generating a relationship or developing a relationship with the brand. That's really impressive. 26 minutes. Uh, I mean, because people have a short attention span these days. So uh, definitely hats off to that. Uh, and well, you, you, know, can see, has you can see why brands, you can see why brands and enterprises, you know, uh, around the world, two, three years ago, we're all talking about metaverse this and metaverse that. The problem was some of the challenges with the technology had not quite, we're not quite there yet. Um, and that's what we did when we built the introverse was to address the concerns of these brands. But they know perfectly well that when you have a consumer that experiences that content rather than just consumes it. Uh, it leads to a much more compelling or a more compelling relationship between the brand and the consumer. I like the way you phrase that experience versus consumption and really wanting to yeah. experience the content of that brand. And I got to say, if anyone has a chance to go and actually visit a distillery, it is a great experience. But if you can't do that, I think the bourbon verse is uh, definitely the way to go. Um, you mentioned, you know, kind of the metaverse. We've been talking about metaverse versus introverse. And, you know, when you all started this a couple of years ago, that was when the metaverse was really, really hot. I mean, Facebook changed its name to meta. And I mean, metaverse was a buzzword everywhere. And we just don't see that anymore. But it seems like you all have taken that into a new direction, uh, kind of away from the buzz to something that perhaps makes more sense. And I want to explore that with you with your client base. I mean, you've mentioned a pretty impressive client base for a startup, in addition to Angel's Envy and Warner Records, Estee Lauder, Fidelity, PwC, Salesforce. I mean, this is a diverse range of industries, beauty, finance, tech, uh, high profile brands. What is the value proposition that your company is bringing to companies like these? Well, I mean, you know, we talked about it just earlier is engagement levels. I mean, how do you develop a relationship with a consumer these days? Everybody's on TikTok. Everybody's attention span is, you know, milliseconds. Um, how do you develop a long tail relationship with consumers and with ultimately with 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 customers? And so, you know, when we built the Introverse tech stack, um, this was in, in direct uh, response to what our clients were telling us, but also what consumers were telling us. So if we take a comp, if we take, uh, just like you said, Metaverse was on everybody's lips uh, two years ago, and then just as quickly as that happened, it fell apart. And it fell apart for the same reasons I mentioned earlier, which is, it's just not quite there yet. And the metaverse worlds were built on blockchain technology, which has a, absolutely a use case in this space, but they weren't quite baked in yet. They weren't quite ready yet. Um, and consumers hardware wasn't quite ready yet for the type of experiences that we could stream to them. Um, and so getting back to your question. So immersion time is obviously a big value proposition. It's distinguishing themselves from their competitors. Um, these are the types of things that they're looking for. They're looking for the next version of the internet. I mean, I remember in the mid nineties, I, I tried out the internet. I remember a friend of mine said, it was actually early nineties. He said, you got to check out this internet thing. I said, what are you talking about? He said, come here, I'm going to show you. And he sent an email and I thought, big deal. Um, I thought this isn't going anywhere. And then of course I was wrong. Um, and then, you know, the next version came out and it included pictures and basic web pages. And then the next version came out and it included video. And then the next version came out, Web 2, and it gave everybody a voice and social media began. This is just the next version of the same connection. We all want to connect with each other. There's just better ways to do that. Every decade, we figure out a better way to do that. And an immersive experience is a better way to connect with our friends, our families, and our brands. Interesting. All right, this is a uh, business and investment show, so let's talk dollars and cents. Terra Zero had approximately one and a half million Canadian dollars in revenue in the first quarter of last year, significantly higher than a year earlier. What is your what are your projections like going forward? Yeah, it's interesting that you that you mentioned that. So, like I said earlier, 
we learned a lot from our clients. It's one of the uh, biggest benefits as an entrepreneur is to be able to listen to your clients and be able to build exactly what they're telling you to build. We don't build something and say, please buy this. We are literally building what they've asked us to build. And that's what the introverse is. So in mid 2023, uh, we decided that we were going to go full board on building out a new platform, which we call the introverse, which was to address all of the concerns that our clients had about a KYC, uh, anti-money laundering, uh, crypto versus fiat, uh, data and IP protection, and all these other uh, aspects. Um, so we built the introverse with three main products. There's introverse enterprise, which is the same kind of stuff that that we've talked about. We build it for the bourbon companies or, you know, Molson Coors is one of our clients. Uh, we build bespoke experiences. They have no barrier to entry. You don't need any special hardware. You don't need any special glasses. You don't need to connect a crypto wallet. You literally jump in by, by typing in or clicking on introverse.com forward slash BBverse, for example. Um, and those are bespoke experiences. But then I wanted to build something that was highly scalable. And so the other product is called Introverse Pro. And Introverse Pro, if you think of Wix, back in the day, any business owner could go to Wix.com, choose a template of a website, customize it how they wish, add Shopify, and now they've got their own e-commerce site without doing much. We've done the same thing with Introverse Pro. Basically, it's a bunch of different templates from a retail store, but mostly geared at music and content creators. They build their own uh, uh, space. Um, they connect our payment module, and now they can monetize their space. This is a big deal with Napster and what we're building with Napster. And I'll get back into that in just a second. And then the third version or the third product is Introverse Live. Introverse Live is launching in the summer. And Introverse Live, we talked about social media. Right now, I might have Facebook or whatever social media. I post my pictures. I have message my friends. And I tell the world how amazing my life is. Um, what Introverse Live is, is we are going to be giving everybody in the world a free apartment. They can customize it however they wish with different furnishings, colors, paintings, viewscapes, whatever. Um, but instead of just posting their pictures and, and, and being, like we said before, you consume content, we want people to experience it. So they can invite their friends over to their apartment. They can both watch Netflix together in that apartment. They can play games together. They can link out into all of the different metaverse and introverse experiences from their apartment. So it becomes a new form of social media. And getting back to Napster and why we built a scalable introverse product, um, Napster, as you may remember, 25 years ago changed music entirely. And, and I know that uh, someone from Napster is on your board of advisors, right? That's correct, the CEO. Um, and okay. so, and 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 he originally came from Roblox. He was the head of music partnerships globally for Roblox. And what we're doing, by the way, is is just a mature, a more mature version of Roblox and Fortnite, which our kids have all grown up with. We're just building a mature version for adults. And so, um, so with Napster, Napster came out uh, 25 years ago, changed the way that music was distributed and how we consumed it. Uh, unfortunately for Napster, uh, the record labels didn't like it um, and put them out of business pretty quickly. And obviously, we know the rest is history, which is Apple Music and all sorts of music now use the same type of streaming technology and everything is digital. Well, a couple of years ago, Napster reformed uh, in order to become a fully licensed music streaming service. Um, and it's about to change music again. And what I mean by that is this Napster CEO myself, we see the same thing, which is which is an immersive experience. So instead of just listening to music, why can't I develop a closer relationship with my artists that I like, collect uh, various uh, crypto-based NFTs of my artists and display them in my uh, introverse apartment? Um, there is... You know, a whole bunch of things that we can do for gating, for example, how do you allow someone into an event? We can use that and, and develop that with introverts. But the general point here is how is Napster able to differentiate itself from its competitors? Well, the way is through the introverse. It's by building an immersive experience for its subscribers, but also for all of its artists. So Dan, just to jump back in there again, uh, you mentioned three types of services. So there's the spoke platform that you started with, 
this uh, platform now, which allows anyone to essentially take a template and create their own introverse and exactly. these apartments, if you will, that are live, that people can have their own introverse apartments. Uh, we were talking money. How are how is your revenue do, doing? We talked about the the staff from the first quarter of last year, which is the most recent information that I have. How has the revenue grown since then, and what are you looking at going forward? Yeah, this is I mean this is a blue sky company. Um, we know that out of the gate in our first uh, two quarters, only one of which really was a revenue producing, we did almost two million dollars in uh, in bespoke experiences, uh, what, what we call enterprise activations. Um, in terms of revenues moving forward, um, I have absolutely no idea. But what I do know is that uh, from everything that we've done, we believe that, you know, why wouldn't I have an introverse apartment as my new form of social media? Of course, I want to listen to music at the same time as my friend, but we can't do that online. We can't do that in any other format unless we're together. We can do that in the introverse. Um, you know, if I'm a brand, why wouldn't I enjoy an immersive experience? If I'm a sports book, why wouldn't my clients like to come and bet on sports within an immersive environment? Um, so what we did was we built the tech stack. Um, so in terms of revenues moving forward, uh, it, it's 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 a difficult uh, it's difficult to forecast. I don't know what the uptake is going to be for Introverse Live. But what I will say is there's a reason that all these brands are our clients. And there's a reason that a company like Napster uh, has fully partnered with Terra Zero to build out this immersive experience for their listeners. Let me just jump in right there. Like you said, Terra Zero is a subsidiary of this Canadian company, Big Digital Assets. That's big with two Gs. So if investors are interested in investing in the introverse and Terra Zero, they can do it through Big Digital. Uh, and Big Digital has several business units. In addition to Terraverse, it has um, what it fights money laundering. It helps to verify cryptocurrency wallets. It has a cryptocurrency trading platform. And then you, in addition to being head of Terra Zero, you're also the interim CEO of Big Digital. Well, Big Digital's share price has been under a lot of pressure of late. It's down about 30% over the past month. But if you zoom out to October, the stock is actually up 80%, nearly 80%. So tell us, why do you think investors should put big on their watch list or include it in their portfolios? Yeah, so big digital assets owns three companies. One of them is Netcoins. Netcoins is a fully licensed crypto exchange uh, licensed across Canada and in, a, in about a third of the U.S. states, with more coming online soon. Um, Netcoins does... Uh, you know, half a million to a million dollars in revenue per month. This is on trading fees. Has over 100 million of assets under management and has over 200,000 registered users, of which about 20,000 are active monthly users. Um, Blockchain Intelligence Group is a data analytics and forensics technology company. It works with law enforcement globally. Um, it works with private enterprise. Um, and has basically developed two products that are uh, for investigative purposes and for uh, essentially KYC and AML to ensure that people aren't money laundering, but also to again, ensure to when know you your client and anti money laundering. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, but it's also for consumers moving forward because I don't want to be able, to, I don't want to do business and send money to someone if I don't know that they're a trusted source. I want to know if they've ever been associated with the dark web or if they've ever been associated with a hack or any of these types of crimes and, you know, and, and issues. And blockchain intelligence groups data and nine years of labeling all of that transaction data for Bitcoin and Ethereum um, uh, is very valuable for that purpose. Now, how the whole thing comes together, and yes, prior to me joining the company, uh, the company went through some challenges. Obviously, a lot of crypto companies have. And the main target audience, for example, for blockchain intelligence group is law enforcement. Um, but the tools are very much what we're all going to use in the future. And I'll just explain why that makes so much sense. When I started Terra Zero, big digital assets wanted to diversify uh, their portfolio of companies. And we were a company that was building essentially digital assets. Um, everything that we do is a digital asset, whether it's a virtual chair or whether it's a virtual bottle of bourbon. Uh, it is a digital asset. 
Um, and so when when they first invested in the company and then eventually said, look, we, we love this so much, how can we bring the three companies together? And so as, as we move forward, what you will see is you will see that Terra Zero is the front facing company. We're the ones with the consumers and the big brands and everything else. But as we integrate crypto payments, as we integrate NFTs into the introverse world, as we create NFTs for our partners at Napster, for example, or Warner Music, and we need a place for secondary uh, markets for buying and selling these items, or at least our users do, they need tools like blockchain intelligence group tools. They need an exchange in which to exchange fiat into crypto and crypto back into fiat. So Terra Zero Netcoins and blockchain intelligence group perfectly uh, create a Web3 company, not only on the technology and creative aspect, but also on the crypto aspect, which I think is very key. Yeah, I mean, crypto has had this kind of image, if you will, of the Wild West at times, particularly with some of the high profile uh, court cases that are going on. So it's really interesting to hear that your company is focused on the regulatory side and assisting that and assisting on fighting money laundering and kind of that dark side of the industry. And I can see where there will be, you know, definitely a market for that going forward. Um, also, I guess if, if you look at how the stock is doing, uh, there's an analyst, uh, the investment house HC Wainwright recently, who gave Big Digital a buy rating. He said a target price of $1.50 Canadian a share, about six times higher than your current share price. So definitely a vote of confidence there as well. Dan, thank you so much for joining us today. It's really been interesting to learn about this uh, cutting edge stuff about the introverse and everything you're doing in that world. Yeah, thanks very much for having me. We've been speaking with Dan Reitzik. He's the head of Terra Zero Technologies and the interim CEO of Big Digital Assets. And you've been watching Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swido. Thank you.